Hello, welcome to Channel 10 News. I am Gris I am Grace Mom. The breaking news is Brown vs. BOE. Linda Brown is an African American who lives in Topeka, Kansas and went to a white school because her dad won the Brown vs. BOE fight when he lost that case. Uh, then when he lost that case, he went to the NAACP, National Association of Advancement for Colored People, to fight. He apparently lost that case and he still kept on trying until he won. So that's how Linda Brown, the African American, became the first Brown to go to a white school. It's a law that everybody can go to a school. The Brown vs. BOE lawsuit started in 1951, that ago. In 1950, Linda father, Oliver Brown, and 13 other parents tried to enroll their kids into white schools, but they they were turned down because they were African Americans. The NAACP decided to take the case to the Supreme Court, and they kept on getting cases from, for about three years, so that after another three long years, they won. Now let's take it to Caitlin at the Capitol. Hello, I am Caitlin George, and I am here to interview two people who have two different sides. Um, what are the two sides? The two sides are Africans, Amer African Americans, and BOE. BOE stands for Board of Education. Linda Brown's father fought against the BOE to let her go to any school she wants. And high school in 1869 is only white children. Then in 1870, Brown versus BOE won, so that means, and no, Brown versus, Brown won against BOE, so that means Linda could go to any school she wants. I'm not happy about that. She's a black kid, and she shouldn't go to white school. Why shouldn't she go to white school? Because she'll learn better with other blacks, and, whites learn, and white learns better with other whites. Every single human is the same. No one can overpower one another. What is happening today? Kids are going to kids are going to school and learning more information. They're also socializing with other kids. They can't be prevented from drinking at the same water fountain, sitting together on the bus eating at the same restaurant, and learning at the same schools. Let's give, let's give it to our friend Tom. I'm here with Professor Robert and Grace um, behind Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Robert is a history professor, and I'm going to ask um, Robert questions to Robert and Grace. When did it become mandatory to go to school? It became mandatory in 1918. It became mandatory in 1918 when children were working too hard on farms and in coal mines, so their parents sent them to school so they could have a better education and to, pre and to prevent them from getting hurt. Why was this law created in 1918? By 1900s, many courts had child labor disputes, so this law became mandatory to protect the children's welfare. The first law about school was first named in 1842. The law of 1842 said that no child under the age of 15 could work without proof of going to school three months a year. Under this law, businesses were fined $25 if they made children work. In those days, $25 was a lot of money. How come the age is 16 to stay in school? The reason you can drop out of school is when you're 16 is because that is the legal age you can go to work. Is the law still the same since 1913? No, the law had some changes because in 1842 you had to only go to school for 70 days. In 1913 the law was changed to 180 days. That number has not changed since 1913. Is it true you could drop out of school when you were 12? No, it's not true. Thank you, Robert Chris. We are we are here today, January 8, 2002, speaking with President George W. Bush just after the No Child Left Behind law just got signed into law. President George Bush, um, may we speak with you about this law? Yes, the main focus of the No Child Left Behind is to improve the academic 
achievements of students in low performing schools around the country. It strives to have every student achieving at a proficient level by the 2013-14 school year. Do you think there's anything do you think there's anything unusual about the law passing? Well some would say that the law had a lot of support in the House and Senate or that we wouldn't have anticipated. No Child Left Behind has a lot of conservative ideas which many Republicans like but it also has a little, a lot of liberal ways to go around it, which many Democrats like, even with that past. Do you think this will be good for the children in the United States? Yes, it has strong requirements for helping each child do better every year in school. Thank you, but thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, President Bush. This is that's how the government works together to have a balance of power because all three branches have and advantages and disadvantages. Well, that's the breaking news for Brownies and DOE. Thanks for watching channel, channel 10 News. This is Christian Bob wishing you all a good night.